It's nice being here with you. Do you feel comfortable? I feel great. The last time you were on the show, you did push-ups and stuff at Bloomingdale's, you remember? You know, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I remember being over there and doing push-ups and all. Well, what we're going to do here is we have dinner. We're going to have a nice luncheon, Father's Day luncheon, so we're not going to ask you to exercise. That's good. But I do want to ask you this. What does Father's Day mean to you? Well, Bill, uh, you know, I raised you and Barbara and, and right? I the two children, and I, uh, that, that is really... Uh, what I think uh, think about on Father's Day, my children, because I have a lot of fond memories. Uh, growing up, you and Barbara, we were both in the Scouts, and we used to go swimming together. We used to go on vacations together. We used to play ball together. Those were the days. That's right. And they were the good old well, days. What about your father? What do you on Father's Day this Sunday? Will you be thinking all of your dad? Well, yes, Bill, my the father. The original William Boggs, because uh, you're William Boggs Jr. I'm the third. Yeah. And he, Tell us about your father. We well, have a my, picture of him here, too. My father, he was a, a carpet manufacturer in the Kensington section of Philadelphia. And I remember when I was a little boy, I used to go over there and get the spools that were broken up and uh, uh, to start our fire with, you know, before you put the coal on it. And uh, I used to get plenty of string to fly my kite. And uh, my father used to take me to, the, back in those days, it was a lot of sandlot baseball. Uh, the industrial plants in the neighborhood had uh, sandlot teams, and my father used to take me to the ball games, and uh, that was always very interesting and exciting. Let's, while we're talking about it, now here he is. About how old was your father when this was taken, and th is that how you remember him looking? No, I don't remember my father looking that way because that's back in. You know, I mean, that's back probably before I was born. And you were born in the early like 1905 or something like that. So this was probably taken about what 18. 80? Well, I would, uh, I would say that, Bill, yes. Did, the, they were the old tintype pictures that they called them. Did you ever have a mustache like that yourself? No. Did you I, ever I, have a mustache I, I, I or a beard? I started one, but I just couldn't go through with it. Neither of us ever had mustaches or beard. Well, let's, uh, we, you were kind enough to bring along some other pictures. Let's move on to another, another shot. This is a very, here is a picture of my father. And what was the name of your horse? Well, this horse didn't belong to me, Bill. It belonged to Did you steal to a, this horse? A friend of mine in Atlantic City, on, and I used to ride it on the beach. I had permission to ride it on the beach when I How did you get was that down permission? there. But, uh, well, he was a personal friend of mine. The, the horse? horse's name was Tony. Tony the horse. Tony the horse. And he then one, I, does he jump off the steel pier now? No, he wasn't a, he wasn't a uh, show horse. He was a show horse, but he wasn't a show horse for uh, on the end of steel the pier. He didn't dive into the pool, no. All right, now here's another shot. Tell us what you remember about when this was taken, because this is a very uh -huh. a picture of you taken yeah. who knows when. Yeah, I was just a little, back in those days, you know, that's when the women wore the bathing suits down to their ankles, and the men wore the same uh, blue trunks and a white jersey, and when you went in the ocean, the blue trunks would run into the white, We, you know, due to the poor dyes we had back then. And was that your bathing suit? That, that was wearing? my bathing suit, and the, the How bucket. How old were you about? I used to, I guess I was about six years old, Bill. Well, and uh, the bucket I used to use, uh, you know, make, to make mud pies out of and pick up shells on a beach. <laughs> Well, let's move on to the next picture. I don't know which one we have here next. Ah, this is my father, and guess who? What do you remember about me when this was taken? I was only five, <laughs> I look like a midget in this picture. I'm on the right. I well, was five I, or six years I old. I remember the hat that's on there because the hat was given to me by a, by a captain in the armed forces, and uh, you happened to be wearing it. Yes. It was made to fit you. Even then, I had a large head. But, well, I don't know about you having a large well, anyway, head, but that was the, taken uh, in Philadelphia. One more photograph here. This is your baby picture. Oh yeah, you look great right. there. Yeah. And we thought you brought up from Philadelphia today. Also, one other shot. This is me at a comparable age. What did you? What What were your feelings about me at this point? Did I? Was I must have been an enormous responsibility when I came into your life, right? Well. I remember one event that happened, Pearl Harbor, the day you were christened. That, this picture was taken on that day. This picture was taken on that day. That's right. And that, the gown you're I've wearing changed. was... <laughs> yeah, I don't wear that gown anymore. No, that gown was handed to Mother's family. <laughs> we, I, you know what? When Mother was on the show, Liz Smith was very gracious, and she interviewed her about me. Because I can't interview you about me. So I asked a good friend, David Brenner, to come by to ask a couple questions to you about being a father. So do you mind if David comes out now? Not at all. Well, let's have a nice all. welcome That's for great. our good buddy. One of the funniest guys in show business, also from Philadelphia, David Brenner. Hi, David.
I don't you can know. sit down. Dad. You can sit. You can stay. It's okay, Father's Dad. Day. How are you? Okay. How are you? Okay. I want to ask you one question right away. Okay. As soon as I get down here, the main question I want to ask you is why, when you showed a picture, Bill, of yourself and your father, you had to tell the audience that <clears throat> you were the one on the left. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I, I mean, I think they assumed that the child was three feet high and the father was five six. I think the audience just <laughs> they got assumed that. that. Yeah. yeah. What was extraneous information? Yeah. I when when he was a, I gotta ask you a question. You know, okay. Bill now in New York and, and we know each other in New York City and uh, and I see him socially and uh, he makes the newspapers a lot. Yes, he I does. mean he is one of the people you see you see his name, you see pictures of the newspaper. Was did he have this tendency when he was a kid to go for the news, to go for the big shot in the press? Well, uh, in his younger days in the elementary school, he started out by being uh, captain of the uh, safety guards, then he was president of his class, president of the graduating class. And when he got into high school, he was uh, president, of his president of the student body and uh, also a commentator for the gold team on two different years. He's talking to my press so, agent. Uh, this, Great. Is, this is all the money things that uh, he was always in the press all the time. It seemed that way. Even when he... Uh, when he uh, decided to run for president of the student body, they, they run a campaign like the regular, uh, like our uh, regular candidates, you know, run the city and the state. And they have uh, throwouts, and they happen to have a throwout with an ape on it, and have, why not a Lake Bill Box for our president? With a picture of an ape? A picture of an ape. That would be great in the news uh, here. <laughs> why not watch Bill Boggs and have an ape? Right. Same campaign, you could get elected. Good work. But when he, when, you know, now, I don't know if he's told you this. You know, I know I hide things from my father. But I, <laughs> Bill Boggs is very popular with the ladies in New York. I mean, he has seen, I, I go to Studio 54, it's a discotheque. <laughs> and he walks in there with an array of beautiful ladies. And some of them, of uh, the names. Some of them know me. Some of them know him. Most of them leave him before the <laughs> evening's out. But <laughs> some of them, was he always popular with the ladies? <laughs> yes, I would say he was always popular with the ladies, and personally, I'm glad he is because I like to meet them. <laughs> it's true. He has a crush on Lucy Arnaz. Oh, yeah? It's true. Oh, you liked her. Oh, yeah. Lucy, yeah. Lovely person. Yeah. I saw her the other day walking in New York. Well, when Bill, when Bill, what is the story of Bill, and, and this is interesting, we have a lot in common. We're all from Philadelphia. That's correct. We have something else in common, and my brother's name, his nickname is Moby. And Bill Boggs has a dog, Moby, which I don't think my brother would appreciate. But what is the story of Moby? What's going on with this dog? I heard there's an incident with this dog. <laughs> well, they're not a handsome-looking dog, but they, 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 I understand they're really a faithful dog. And I remember one time Bill left it, uh, had the dog up at our home over the holidays, and uh, he was such a clumsy, heavy dog, he went, instead of waiting for the screen door to open, he went right through the screen door with his nose. Moby, well, where, uh, where is he now? He is Mo in the frog dog school and, uh, down in Virginia. They're teaching him to be a frog? No, frog dog. It's the underwater canine intelligence unit of the Army. And he is uh, studying that and uh, will be in one of the first platoons of underwater guard dogs ever. He wears now, a mask. I, wait, a wait, what does a uh, dog guard in the ocean? Rex, what is there a Rex, things that divers could get to and then they bark underwater. It sounds like this. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah right. Whoop. You mean they actually... I don't understand. If a dog goes under the water, how does he guard? Like if you're being robbed, if you're swimming, and you're being mugged. He's there. He's with you. He, he's there. He, he, he's right there. Oh, listen, we have a... Wow, what is this? A prize? Did I David, win a chicken? They, David, they told me that you, that you huh? would be able to introduce um, our waiter. Hi. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> a lunatic comes in the studio. <laughs> No good, huh? Even samples your food. Did you uh, make this, kill it, or choke it to death? <laughs> what a pleasure, waiter that doesn't talk. <laughs> see, see if you could ask him one question or interview him. They told me that you would interview him, like you're going to interview my father. Dover caterers, del delicatessen, right? Or delicacies. Is this an example of your delicacy? I hate to tell you which end you just smell. <laughs> I don't believe it. 
I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. This is David's father, Lou Brenner. Surprise guest up in Philadelphia. We'll be back right after this. I don't is this David's it. mother? Jeez. I don't believe it. A little family mom. reunion. The Brenners have come up from Philadelphia. We'll be back to talk with David's father, Lou, right after this. <laughs> Wishing you a big happy Father's Day in advance. My own father, Bill, is here. David Brenner is here. Up from Philadelphia, special surprise is Lou Brenner. You really didn't know that it was your dad, did you, no, David? No. You know what I thought it was? You know, my father was in vaudeville. He was a comedian. And I thought, I spoke to him yesterday and I said, listen, I'm going to be in Bill Boggs midday. He said, well, uh, your, your mother's going to be playing cards. I'm going to be out. I'll tape the show. I said, okay, right. He'll tape what the show. Time? What time was it? Yeah, what you time said? is it? What time is it on? He wasn't sure he's acting like that. So I told him and everything. <laughs> and then I thought it's a great actor. I thought, gee, this guy does a great pantomime. Lou, would you take off the disguise so we could just see what... All of it? The yeah. wig? One. <laughs> two. two. What else? I mean, the other the ears glasses. are yours. <laughs> there he is. Now I know him. That's my father. Let's have a nice hand for That's Lou. Right. Right. <laughs> he's a real good sport to come up like that. Now, Lou, let me ask you. My daddy. Yes, let me sir. ask you a couple of questions about David. You were a vaudeville performer, and you're from Philadelphia. Where did you work in Philadelphia? What kind of what theater? All the theaters. Yeah. Yeah, I worked at the William Penn, the Broadway, the Allegheny, the Keys on well, Chester. Did you have Street. early indications that David had a, a special sense of humor? No, uh, he was funny all the time. But you know what I mean. He, uh, he was very funny, even when he uh, couldn't move his balance. But anyhow. <laughs> That was funny? No. He made constipation he funny. Did. He did. He didn't make it funny. When it's not it's easy to do, you know. No, I know. I'm when the little that. church fell out, I thought he was going to be no, an you're artist. You're on television. You're on television. Oh, you're not at the Keith <laughs> Theater. Well, I clean. Yeah, this is, this is, this is not burlesque. Oh, no. I this, is li this is live TV. No, he was always funny, and he used to watch me, and we always had fun around the house. We always kidded each other. We always kidded everybody that came in, his boyfriends, his girlfriends, the one or two. But we always had fun. <laughs> What, what would you say, up, up to this point, has been the greatest thrill that David has given you as a, as a father of his son? Maybe this is it today. Well, the greatest thrill is a few of them, but the main one was, I can't forget when he uh, received the award in 1976, the Agravor reward. For, what was that for uh, you? That's the best, best, uh, best Comedian of the Year award. I was in 76, and there I was watching him. And it was a thrill. It was just like I was standing there and... Well, did you want David to be in show business? No, I didn't. Because I used to tell him, David, he'd ask for you my opinion. I said, well, I'll tell you. When you hear people laugh and they applaud, it's a wonderful feeling. And that's all I used to say to him. It's wonderful. You hear 2,000 people applauding and laughing. Never figuring that he would go on. Become how about, a comedian. How about you, Dad? Did you want me to be in show business, or did you think when I started getting in show business with Patchen and Tarsus back in 66, 67, that this was a mistake that I was making? Well, I, uh, I thought you'd follow a business career, but you had designs on, the, on a television career, and when you told me you wanted to major in uh, communications and you entered down in Annenberg School of Communications, uh, that was the answer to it. But you weren't afraid that show business would be too no, unstable I, I, for me? I, I, uh, well, I mean, you were so successful along life's travels as a, as a young man, and I, when you were with Armstrong Cork. Yeah, so those I, were the dark days, though, the Armstrong yeah, days. Yeah, they were the dark days, that's right. No, th those were the boring, were, those were the yawning days. That was boring stuff. Tell me something about your dad, Dave. Uh, I think he's... Uh, what have you learned from him that you apply in your craft? Actually, if, uh, the, the reality of my career is that I'm... Um, I'm really a prototype of him or he's the he's the prototype he's the original so what you see up on the stage is as though my father stepped in a time machine wow. went back and became young and and took this career because I my timing is his my delivery is his the comedic mind is his I emulated him I uh, the jokes that I have in my act were the kind of humor that he had in the house 
To this day, he still gives me lines. Yeah? They're mine. They're yeah, mine. he'll still give me. Give me an example of a line. Give me credit. I, I, like he gave me I, and I give He's giving you great credit, I think. <laughs> he, uh, it's a real like, tribute. Like he called me uh, now the other day, just called me and gave me a line which I haven't even worked yet on television. As a premise, he said, "Did you ever notice if you watch wrestling on television, the announcer will say the man's wearing only trunks, and the announcer says he's got something up his sleeve." <laughs> <laughs> True, but that that is a David Brenner concept. Exactly, you know? but that is really a Lou Brenner concept, which I happen to be the one who's doing it now professionally. Mm -hmm. But it's really his comedic mind. Lou, tell me about your father. Where was he in show business My at all? My father was David's in show business. He was a rabbi. He's <laughs> 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 a rabbi. Really? Right, like that. Yeah. He, he so go was, ahead. What? Yeah. I like the, the People's Theater in Kensington. You mentioned the Allegheny. The I used Allegheny. to go to the Allegheny when I was a young man. So did Mrs. Boggs. That's right. You were the fellow yelled, get the hook. I remember that. <laughs> it could be. It could be. <laughs> it's not impossible. What other lines have you given David recently? Uh, he, he gave me, uh, he gave me one about the, um, the uh, sport event. Another thing a dumb thing announcers do is, uh, he says, imagine if people really took it literally, like their players are eating up the clock. So you have this image of football players calling, give me the four, give me the seven, let me have the dial, you know? <laughs> And that's the David Brenner. Uh, well, Lou, did you do stand-up material as a comedian? Is that what yeah, you were doing? Yeah, stand-up. Yeah. Wow. I didn't sit down because I, you know. So you really, li you were li really living vicariously at this point through David. Is that fair to say right. when you see him on television sure, and so yeah. forth? I just love it. And how, oh. uh, how about your mother, David, who is here in the back with my mother. mom? Oh. Is mother. she? Uh, well, happy I, she's the buff of a lot Lewis of my cook. jokes. You know what I mean? Like uh, what, for example? Well, like her cooking, cook. everything tasted the same. I mean, she's, she is the greatest, to me, the greatest. Everyone in the world should have a mom like my mom and a father like my father. And I think that the people may be a little zany, but there wouldn't be the, the horror that the world has today. You know, I have great parents. And my mother, though, is great a mother as she was. She can't cook. She hates cooking. So every taste tastes the same. Like? Like that meal that I had, the chicken would have tasted like the carrots, would taste like the lettuce. <laughs> the only thing you could say if you ate in my house is you'd say, Mrs. Brenner, the food feels so good. It feels, I mean, That's good it. texture. Just the texture. That's but about it. It all tastes And as long as you eat your green things. <laughs> all right, let's take a break. We have a very special man coming up, Jack Lemon, who's on Broadway in tribute. And Bob Picardo plays his son in that show. And we're going to talk about it because it's a play that deals with the father-son relationships. We'll be right back right after this. Two weeks ago last night, there was a big opening night on Broadway. Tribute, starring Jack Lemmon with Bob Picardo open. And Tribute is a play, it's at the Brooks Atkins Theater. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It deals with Jack Lemmon's character, who is a, a, a sort of a performer. He's a PR man. He's a, he's a tremendously charming and funny man who is dying. And his son, who is played by Bob Picardo, is, makes efforts to get closer to his father in the final days of his life. Let's have a nice welcome for the two stars of tribute, Jack Lemmon and Bob Picardo. Yeah. Nice to see you, Jack. Bob, nice to see you. let me say there's a, a lot of really beautiful acting going on on the, on the stage at the Brooks Acting Oh, Center. thank you, Bill. Let, tell me a little bit about the father that you portray. And, uh, well, he's... Uh, I, the best, the, the only way I found out how to play it was to listen to Bob because he keeps describing me when I'm off stage to all the other characters. I say, oh, that's what he is. Uh. Uh, no, he really is a crowd pleaser. His biggest claim to fame is being a crowd pleaser. He's never really uh, laid anything on the line or made a commitment in any one way. He's afraid to fail in a sense, and he charms his way. There's his Very aspects charming. of all of us in a way, Absolutely. but everybody that we know, we never think of it as ourselves, but he's like every guy I've ever known, about four or five hundred of us in the business. You know, that he's like an actor that plays a part safe. He won't take a chance. He won't take the way. risk. He'll never fail. He'll quit before he fails. You know? And how does he feel about his son? Well, they, they, again, he finally realizes he never made a commitment there. Never really Probably did. as most sons feel at some point in their yeah. life, usually in their teens, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. What would you know, you rotten kid? <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he never did really lay it on the line, you know, as, as Bob said, he woke up one morning and he wasn't there. And Bob, as a son in this play, do you, you're, almost, you're in the shadow of the father. The father's a, the big, charming, suave guy. The mm -hmm. son is sort of an uptight square or something like that, right? Bland. A bland Studious. Character. So but what, what is the urgency behind what your character is trying to do? Because I'm just wondering how the, you do a Sunday matinee? You no, do a, uh, you Saturday, don't, Wednesday and Saturdays. Wednesday and Saturdays. I'm just, I was thinking, on Father's Day or near Father's Day, the, the poignancy of the play will just be doubly and triply yeah. increased, I think. What are you trying to do as a son in tribute? Well, what I'm trying to do is to get to know him. 
to figure him out. I mean, he, uh, he got up and left one morning when I was eight years old, and uh, our contact has been strained since then. I've only seen him, you know, on visitations. And my main objective in the play as a character is just to figure him out so that I can accept or reject him. I've gotten to the age now where I have all this anger and bitterness toward him for all these years, and I just want to either, either accept him in some way or just say, yeah. out of my life, that's it. What, one thing I thought of that, you know, that seems to be there is, is there's a sense of competition un, between the two of you oh, yeah. that underlies. Let's talk about, I think that's an interesting thing, like with David and, and his father. Let me shift down to them just for a second. Yeah. Do you two have competition between you? Uh, no? no? I don't think we know. I don't no. think we competed. We more or less, com we were lucky. We complimented we, each other. We competed each other with jokes, but not... Yeah, the, just with jokes. But in a, but in a, a But if he way. won, it was great. I mean, I laughed, I said, that's better. And that was the end. <laughs> There is an unconscious kind of uh, thing. I don't know if anybody else agrees with me. The, and whether semantically you'd call it competition, I don't know. But I know I felt with my father, and I adored him, and I loved him. But there was a certain kind of uh, competition in the sense of there's an awesome kind of fear, in a way, a worry of measuring up yeah. to oh, what yes. your father is. And yes. in that sense, you build your own competition, in mm -hmm. a way. You know, you're, I, I noticed I really got much closer to him, for instance, when I was well into my 20s and had established some kind of uh, yeah. in the business and felt secure on my own and that I could accomplish something. Only then did I really find I could relax totally. Yeah, you don't want to fail. Without worrying yeah. about that failing. That makes sense. Yes. Yes. You don't want to fail that. and have your father see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the two of the important people, you don't want them to see you fail because yeah. it's beyond failing if it's, if it's your father witnessing it. That's yeah. true. I think that's, that's where the competition comes in, yeah. to prove yourself to him. What yeah. would you say, Jack, if you had to look back to what your father gave you that you're using? Now, that's a complicated question because mm -hmm. it, we could spend 15 years in analysis to answer it. But in terms of your craft as an actor, the art, is there anything that you got from your father that uh, you, you can say, yeah, that's because my dad showed me that about myself? I think so, yeah. And uh, uh, there was a couple of qualities he had that either consciously or unconsciously I have tried uh, very hard to stick to. And you wouldn't think they would necessarily be pertinent. He was in the baking industry. Really? Where, where'd you grow, uh, where did you grow in up? In Boston, in and around Boston. Do you remember, what do you remember about your father's business? Did, did he come home? Complaining about business? Oh, Did sure. He, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like all of us. I think in that sense, show business is no different than any others. It's just that you can't close the office door at six o'clock and forget it. There's no way you leave a character, I guess, when you're working on it. But um, he always felt that whatever you did, you should try to only do what you really love, what you want to do. I think an awful lot of us are unfortunately, uh, it's beholden that a man make a living. Uh, we have to pay our time to make very living, often yeah. we out of necessity I think an awful lot of us don't really do what we would like to do and that's a shame you know? what kind of uh, things did you I'm gonna ask a question to everybody here what kind of things did you do to get your father angry oh. anyone can answer first maybe David I, I grew a big nose <laughs> yeah. didn't like yeah. that, huh? I knew he'd hate that. How, how about you, Dad? What do you remember making your father angry at you? Can you recall anything that you did that he didn't like? Well, uh, yes, I can recall. When I was a youngster, I used to go out my bare feet, you know. And he never did like me to go out my, in my bare feet. You mean walking around the streets in your bare feet? a fire plug, you know, and the water would run down the street. Now you get in the... He would never like me to do that, I know that. I know one thing you never liked. It. My father hated it when I came home late for dinner. I mean, this was like a... I think you were kind of obsessed with that, you know, that I would be there. And you always wanted to eat so early. Well, your mother... Who eats at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> it's an early dinner. Your mother, your mother, I'll say that. Your mother eats dinner at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Jack? What do you remember? That well, all I had your to do was get up. <laughs> yeah, anything made him angry. No, he, I, you know, I really, I'm trying, was trying to think while we were talking here. I can't think of specific things. No. Uh, uh, you know, that, or habits that I had that, that I would keep repeating or, or whatever. Um, I think I was a pretty average kid. I did just about everything you shouldn't do. Of did course. he not want you to caught. go into show business? Did, he he said a beautiful thing, a la what we were saying yeah. before about doing what you want to do. As I said, he was in the baking industry of donuts, bread, dried mixes, and formula uh, flour stuff and everything. Anyhow, he knew that I want, had wanted to be an actor all my life, as far back as I can remember. And when I got out of college and was ready to come down to save the American theater, which they wouldn't let me do, I don't know why, but anyhow. <laughs> it was a plot against uh, you. I, I wanted to borrow a couple of hundred bucks from him 
uh, to get started and take a crack at it. And he said, you sure you don't want to start at the bottom in my business? Like most fathers would love to see their son go into their business, you know. Uh, and I said, no, I want to be an actor. And he said, okay, now you really need to do this. And I said, yeah, I, I really, I, I've got to prove to myself one way or the other, I need to do it. He said, all right, and you love it. I said, yeah, I love it. And okay, here's the 200 and Godspeed, because the day that I find romance in a loaf of bread, I'm going to quit. And I never forgot Great it. Line. It was a, a lovely line. Absolutely Great beautiful. Line. Another thing he said was that anything, he says, if it's tough, and it is, anything that you ever get will never be worthwhile if it's easy. You know there something? is no such thing. I have quoted my own father many times on a similar thing. Dad, I'm sure you remember saying this to me. I've, I can't tell you how many times I heard my father say, you only get out of something what you put into it, yeah. which is a simple... Yeah. Homily, but you know, I think about that a lot because whenever we do a great show, I will realize that what, what went into that was a little bit more than an average show or whatever. Let's take a break. We have Frank Perdue and his son Jim and Victor Hill de la Madrid joining us right after this. Okay, this is our Father's Day special. We give you a big kiss for Father's Day in advance. Joining us right now is Frank Perdue, the chicken man. Some say Ed Koch look-alike, and his son, Jim Perdue, as well as our on-location reporter, Hill de la Madrid. Welcome, gentlemen. It's nice to see you. Nice to be here. Thank you. Jim, you, this, is a, this is a chance to tell the world, how, how much into chicken is your father, really? Do you have chicken sculptures around the house, things like that? Very much so. Really? Yeah. Chicken tiles in the bathroom, on the walls, and... Uh, the plates have chickens on them, the glasses, everything. Does he eat a lot of chicken? Quite a bit. <laughs> Do you, Frank? At restaurants and, and everywhere. Oh, yeah. I had uh, chicken hash for breakfast. Chicken <laughs> hash? <laughs> Frank, do you want Jim to go into, into the family business, or is he already in the business? No, he's not in the business. Uh, he's um, um, in the marine biology, working on his Ph.D. Underwater yeah. chickens. Yeah, underwater <laughs> chickens, yeah. possibly. <laughs> Jim, how do you feel about the, the fact that your, your father is a big national celebrity as a result of all these commercials? You got this the Purdue name. You could walk right into a, a father-son business, but you're walking under the water instead. Well, I think he's always told me to, you know, follow what uh, I felt I wanted to do, and you know, stressing that you do your best in the job that you enjoy doing most. What are the things you most admire about your father? I want to ask everybody that. Whether their father is here or not. What's, what are the things you most admire about Frank Purdue? Well, he's become very successful, and and yet he's been able to, uh, you know, maintain a, a certain humbleness uh, with his employees and in the company. And um, uh, I I basically just have a lot of respect for him. Frank, how about you? With your father, we spoke about him once, I believe. Yeah. That, uh, tell tell me a little bit about what was his name. Arthur W. Purdue. Arthur W. Purdue. What did you most admire about your dad? Oh, I, I the the simplicity of the individual. He was a completely uh, uncomplicated man, uh, very religious person. He taught me all of the uh, good things that I am and that I, you know, as far as business, as far as integrity as far as uh, working hard. Did he start the family business, the yes, chicken business? he did. Mm -hmm. And you were, did he convince you to go into it or were you naturally drawn into it because of your own interest no, in I, chickens? No, I really didn't want to be in the business when I was a, a teenager. Couldn't wait to get off that chicken farm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, as I got older, well, I, he seemed to be smarter. <laughs> and I, I finally decided after a couple years in school that uh, I didn't want to be a school teacher because uh, I was in teacher's college and I decided to go back on the farm and work with him. Hilda La Madrid, your father isn't here, but what do you most admire about your father? Well, he's, uh, he's a brilliant writer. That I admire very much. And uh, my father and I were never really very close. I hate to say that. No, well, it's a, if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Yeah, and every year we can never be together. You know, we're away from each other most of the time. And, uh, Did you have conflicts when you were together? Was there... We have never been able to have a father-son relationship, uh, a good relationship. Uh, there's always been a, a distance uh. between the two of us. 
You know, you're, you're talking almost exactly about one aspect of the premise of the show, uh, of the play tribute. Mm -hmm. it, it's yes. almost exactly what they, they have to resolve. Yeah. I love my father very much. You know, I never hated him or disliked him for that. But I only wish that we had become closer together. You know? if, is your father alive now? Yes, he's alive. Do you have a sense that you want to make it closer? I mean, that's what Bob Picardo is doing in tribute. He's trying to get closer to his father during his father's last months. Well, let me, let me give you an example. When uh, David Brenner here uh, realized that his father was here and uh, they embraced, I was watching from the wings and I, uh, I became very emotional there because suddenly it wasn't David's father, but it, but it was my father walking in. And uh, right now he's half crippled. Uh, and I saw him, I pictured him in my mind walking right through the floor here. And I thought for a moment that it was me doing, embracing my father. And I became very emotional. You know, to shift down to Bob Picardo here for a second, the, the, the situation that your character in Tribute, what this young man is trying to do, I think there a lot of us can identify with because he's trying to close the barrier, right? Right, to get to know his father. It's an opportunity <clears throat> that unfortunately I never had in my own life because <clears throat> I lost my father when I was very young, when I was um, nine. So that what this play offers me the opportunity to do is to experience that part of my life, which um, unfortunately I, you know, to get to know the man. Because that, similarly in the play, just as I was in effect abandoned by my father through death at a young age, my character Judd in the play was, is abandoned by his father through divorce, through an abrupt yeah. and sudden divorce. But my character f has the opportunity to, to try to figure the man out, to try to get to know him. I honestly believe that there is a very strong message for sons in the play Tribute, that a Absolutely. son could go to see that play and come away with a, a renewed sense of wanting to get to know his, well, a lot his of father. Mail. A lot of mail from yeah, the people in the U.S. Yeah, I believe You're it. Right. Jack, tell me, I want to ask everyone this question that <coughs> we started on the end. What did you most admire about your father? First, what was his name? It, it's basically the same as mine, John. I've been yeah. called Jack, and he was all his life, but it's uh, uh, John. Were you little, little John or little Jack uh, when you were growing up? Jackie. <laughs> you know what I was? Mean? <laughs> I'd like to I be will little never, Willie. Li <laughs> that I was will me. never, as long as I live, forgive him, though. And he's, he unfortunately passed away, and as I, it was a great loss to me because, as I said, fortunately we got very, very close. Yeah. But younger it was sort of strain I think somewhat like your relationship until I realized I wasn't really giving either if he wasn't I sure wasn't but uh, I'll never forgive him for my name which was the same as his and, she said. <laughs> and if, if somewhere a couple few hundred years ago there was some Austrian or something named Euler U-H-L-E-R I don't know where this guy came from but that became the middle name so the initial is you of course so all I ever knew <laughs> and became traumatic by the time I was eight. Uh, all day long at school, all I'd hear was, Jack, you, lamb, and Jack, you, lamb, and Jack, you, lamb, and I, I, Why would he do that? It's bad enough that it was him, but he didn't have to lay it off on me. Uh, I know it's going to put George or Jim or something Jack, in the middle. Jack, you, lamb, and... Well, I was, I was little Willie. Dad, quickly, very quickly, what do you most remember about admiring about your father? Well, we were very close, Bill, as I told you before. Uh, my father uh, was a baseball fan, and he would take me to the baseball games and things like that, where, where other children in the neighborhood, their fathers, some of them just didn't... Just didn't his interest in you. He, he, he had quite an interest in me, I would say, yes. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We have Barnard Hughes and his son Douglas Hughes, and John Cullum and John David Cullum. Stay with us. Fisher, wherever you are. What a beautiful sign. I always like that. But joining us right now, here is Bernard Hughes, a starring a Tony Award winner, a Drama Desk Award winner. He was with us uh, on our Drama Desk show in the great play Da on Broadway, and his son, Douglas Hughes. Welcome, gentlemen. It's nice to have you with us. Also with us is uh, 
One of the stars, also highly honored of On the 20th Century, John Cullum and his son, John David Cullum. Welcome. John David, have you gotten, have you done your Father's Day shopping yet? No, I haven't done any shopping for him yet. No? What, what would, you, would you like to reveal what you think you'd like to get him? Well, uh, I, I usually leave this signing up to my mother, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. I no? don't know what I'll get him. Wait, wait, tell us a little bit about your father. Is he, uh, does he have a, a very good memory? Is he forgetful? No, yeah, he's forgetful. Very forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, what kind of things does he forget? Lines. Um, <laughs> he forgets names. What, names? Anything else. Yeah, yeah, names. People's names. If someone is asking, what, That's you, me, yeah. you forget names as well? Terrible. Terrible. I call my first cousins the your male cousin's pal and the, and the, the female cousin's sweetheart. You can't oh, hi, pal. Hi, sweetheart. First cousins, I remember. That's I called different. him. Until I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it. Do you want to follow in your father's footsteps, John David? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you try, John, maybe you could coach him a little bit on the delivery of that yeah. line. <laughs> I wouldn't like to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What do you want to do? Well, he uh, he he worked in Shenandoah for a while as the understudy to one of my my youngest son, and uh, we didn't know how to get him off that track because school was starting. I didn't want him to stay there, but we didn't want to tell him he had to quit. So his mother told him that children's stars don't usually grow up to be very good adult stars, so he gave his notice the next day. So you can wait now, huh? <laughs> so I don't, but I, I don't think he really is in <coughs> theater so much as other things now. That's, what would you say, John David Cullum, are the, the differences, it's a complex question, between you and your dad? Uh, Where did you come up with these questions, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> How are you two different? You're shorter, I'd say, so yeah, I'm, I'm four foot seven. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd say that he takes more time in making decisions. I always like, I always just jump right on in. I don't really care about anything. He also is, I, I don't care about money as much as him. <laughs> oh, really? Money burns a hole in my pocket. <laughs> Who's money, John? <laughs> Hey, John, what do you do with the son who says money burns a hole in his pocket? Right? I, I try to hide my wallet as much as possible. No, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, being kind of hard on himself. I, the thing about John David is that uh, uh, he, uh, the thing that I have trouble with John is that he makes all the same mistakes that I do and have done when I was a kid, and that makes me very upset. You that's know, that's a very out. interesting thing because it's, you don't to see yeah. the same things repeated. Boy, I can, I can understand that. That's, uh, like that's what, for example? Well, in that area, being, uh, uh, not, not uh, being more deliberate in making decisions, because I was just the same way he was. He's got all the same bad habits that I have, and that's where I really get angry with Well, how's his backhand? His backhand is as good as Jimmy Connors. It's really great. That's good. I, it looks like it. You know, John good. played in the, in the Broadway. I'm dressed like this because I have to play in the tournament. I just well, played the guy that he played. Well, you played. I got killed. Six love, six four. Yeah. But that's four games off of an adult. pretty good. I played against the New York Apples last <laughs> night, and it was the, a bomb. I, I played bomb. with Billy, jo uh, Billy Jean King the day before yesterday in an exhibition. That was one of the most thrilling tennis matches I've ever had. That's good. I want to shift down to the end of the table. I don't want to catch you with your food. No, not at all. Bernard Hughes is stirring and dot. Tell us, you play a father, a, a yes. ghost of a father, yeah. because the father's died. Just as we discussed with tribute of Broadway and its aspects of the father, tell us a little bit about your play. Uh, well, Da is an Irish play. The play opens on I'm, I'm the day of my funeral. I, my son has just come back after burying me, and he's... Um, He's clearing out the house before uh, getting a fast plane to take him, him home to England where he lives. And suddenly I appear. And uh, uh, Jack, Lem uh, Len Jack Lemon, Jack Leonard, who wrote the play, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jack <laughs> Leonard, who wrote the play, uh, uh, describes the play as being the conversations with his father that he never had. He was an adopted son, uh, hated everything about uh, his background, or so he thought couldn't wait to get away from, uh, from his roots, uh, left, uh, married a, a, a Belgian girl instead of an Irish girl, went to England and, uh, and settled down there, and finally realized that you can't get away from your roots. You have to come back and face them and carry them on your back for the rest of your life, and that's exactly what he did. Douglas, I'm wondering, uh, 
seeing your father in this role of Da on Broadway, has it affected your relationship at all, seeing him portray a father? No, I, I don't think so. It's, uh, I'm, it's, uh, it was pretty good to start with, and, uh, uh, but I, uh, and I, I don't actually uh, recognize much of my father in the man uh, uh, he's playing on stage. It's, uh, it's a rather different sort of Irish uh, palaver that uh, uh, really you don't, uh, I mean you palaver, I suppose. But what, you, what does it mean to palaver? To, to uh, natter on, to talk too much and just sort of idly. Blather uh, is yeah. another word. Blather, uh, yeah, right, yeah. to blather. But I don't, uh, it's um, just an enormous pride, really, I think is the, uh, uh, you know, one strong feeling that this has given me. How about what we were talking about before, the simil similarities and differences between the two of you? Um, what would you say the essential similarity is? Uh, I don't think there's great Not similarity. So. I was, I, when I, waiting over there, you know, trying to prime myself and writing down a list of things I admired about my father, that uh, to come on and say, I, I just thought that uh, uh, he uh, uh, has a certain gracious acceptance of what comes along, and I worry and fret and am rather unhappy with Well, the, how are you going to influence your son not to worry so much? Uh, well, uh, these are all the things that I've learned to cope with, and this gracious acceptance has come with age, <laughs> I must say. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe there was. I, uh, I don't know, there are lots of things about uh, Doug I uh, uh, don't approve of. He, wear, he wears his good shoes out in the rain and things like that. Hard. I remember you were asking somebody about things that annoyed uh, your father's. Yeah. And I, uh, there's only one thing that really of my father in me in the play, and that's a reading uh, that I give, and I can still hear it. And uh, the thing that most how does it go? Me, well, uh, the most the thing that most annoyed my father was uh, getting me up in the morning, and I can still hear him after about the fourth try, and I was still in bed. I would hear him saying, "For the love of the good." Da, 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 da. Will you come down when you're called? You know, and I can still <coughs> hear that. I uh, edited a little there because uh, <laughs> he had took uh, had a rather colourful speech. <laughs> John, David, uh, does your father have trouble getting you up in the morning? Well, I come, I get up much earlier than him, so uh, I have to get him up sometime. Really? Is it tough to wake? Uh... Yes, because he always says he'll get up and then he doesn't. It's not easy being a father, is it? It sounds like it's not easy being a son. We'll be back right after this. We have a father of quadruplets coming up. This is our Father's Day luncheon, and uh, we've just been joined by a gentleman whose life has had a radical change. His wife just had four babies. Uh, we're joined right now by George Presson, who is the father of quadruplets, recently noted in the paper. George, welcome. You should get the Father of the Year award, I would think. Well, I'm very happy. When, uh, I just picked my wife up this morning from the hospital after four months of being there, and. Uh, the babies will all be coming home next week. So your wife is in the hospital because of complications with the pregnancy, right? Well, just to play it safe and to keep her uh, off her feet, the doctors there recommended that she go to the hospital. Jack, I want, what what would you like to know about a father of four babies and what is in the future for him? If he wants, I'll lend him my children for him. Well, I would, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want. <laughs> it's a whale of a future. Uh, that's a heck of all a responsibility. All at once. Yeah. 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 How do you feel about the responsibility? Well, it's just I, the economic responsibility yeah. of four children. Is, well, know. I welcome it. Um, we knew since February that we were going to have a multiple birth. I have two other children at home. And um, I'm pretty prepared, <coughs> to tell you the truth, mentally, economically, physically. What kind of work do you do? Um, I lease computers. I work for a leasing company, OPM Leasing, here in Manhattan, 71 Broadway. And uh, we lease the big IBM 370s computers. Has it really sunk in yet that you've, you're going to be raising four? Now, is it two boys and two girls? Yes, two boys and two girls. It's sunk in, believe me. Uh, <laughs> I know it. What are you doing about diapers, uh, George? 
Uh, we're gonna you should run a diaper leasing service instead well, of computer. That's true. Uh, I'm trying to get someone to buy Pampers and give it to me. Oh, the company. <laughs> you know, Groucho, Marx, Groucho Marx once had somebody on the show that had uh, something like 13 children. He said, why did you have, why do you have 13 children? The man said, I, lo I love children. And Groucho Marx says, I love to smoke a cigar, but I take it out of my mouth once in a while. That's funny. I mean, before we go too far along in here, um, this is obviously it's an all-men show today, but I, I, I want to pay a special tribute to Sharon Prussian, who is the woman who had the four children. Sharon, can you just come out here for just a second, please? Excuse me for not getting up, but we're all wired in here. That's all right. You just came out. How do you feel physically? Uh, terrific. It's 96 days. Four. Having, giving birth to four. Exciting, and I couldn't wait for it to happen. How long did it take from the first? Minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Operating room, four minutes. Now, you're very little. How much? Normally, when you're not, and I gained 63. Same you're asking, uh, raising <laughs> four months. I'm ecstatic, I'm thrilled about it. I, um, I, have I yes, took a particular drug with the possible a multiple, and um, wanted it, so you got it, right. Now I have my perfect family. That's good. My daughter said, "Now we're the Brady Bunch." You're absolutely. <laughs> three and three. That's what she wanted. The so. Prussian Bunch. Right. Why don't the Prussian you give, bunch. give a, the father a kiss? There. I thank absolutely. you for coming on. Thank it's thank nice you. to see you. But that's all. A kiss, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hold it down. No, that's really. Funny. Nine months. will be back. Thirty-two. <laughs> I want to I want to shift down to John David Cullen uh, again. <coughs> tell tell me a little bit, and this would be a general thing for all of us. Some of the most memorable moments you've had with your father. Some. Yeah, one, one. just okay. one. Uh, well, a couple of years ago, my father was uh, in Long Island, Oak Beach. No, you've never heard of it. Oak Beach, Long Island, yeah. And uh, we had a we rented a uh, small boat from uh, these. Uh, our neighbors next door, and uh, the, boat was, the boat was really like we didn't know what was wrong with it, but it was something was wrong, and uh, we we drove the boat out to uh, Fire Island on a on a very rough day, and my friends were out there, and so we decided to it was like uh, 10 or 12 miles, mm -hmm. and the boat the boat was only about 10 horsepower, and we uh, we almost ran out of gas, and the waters were very rough, and I drove the boat some of the way. And that's what that's how I remember it because he always is telling me that that was a very that was a very unwise thing Dangerous, to do. Dangerous, huh? And he's always glad. He's he always, every time he thinks about it, he says, "I'm glad that you're still alive." It's interesting that this would be a most memorable moment because there's a life and death circumstances there, right? He, he remembers. That. You like to I have it. I have had dreams about it. <laughs> I wake up with cold sweats. Jim, how about you, Jim Purdue? Some of the one highly memorable moment you and your father. Well, I, it was more comical than anything else, I imagine. Uh, I think it was the time when I was in high school and he uh, decided to tell me all there was to know about girls. You know? And uh, Go out and watch the chickens, son! <laughs> <laughs> so he sat me down and uh, sort of looked at me and stalled for a while and shrugged and his shoulders. And he said, well, I guess you probably know all there is to know. <laughs> and that was about That it. was the lecture. Yeah. 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 That's what you want to know. <laughs> David, how about you? How about you with uh, Lou, your father? Oh, I have a lot. One of them was, uh, one of them was uh, going shopping, and he wore his underwear on his head. That was a... <laughs> a no, I'm making that up. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, this is going to go down as one of them, because I have been playing tricks, uh, practical jokes on my family since I'm a child. And, uh, this is the first time they all pulled it off and got me. What's so today, today yeah. is going to be a memorable moment. Yeah, because I have gotten them all my life. <laughs> Jack, how about you? If you think of a memorable oh, moment, uh, you and there is. Uh, you got an hour? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact. No, I tell well, you, I got the movie today. It, 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 I will try to make this as brief as, uh, brief, uh, as possible, but it, it's true story. The, the most memorable single day, because I never believed that my father would would 
literally acknowledge me from that day on. And I don't remember exactly how old I was. I think I was about 10 or 11. And uh, it was the day before the 4th of July. And uh, Brooks, the boy next door, and I had gotten a hold of some firecrackers, which we weren't supposed to have, but we had gotten them. And the day started when I, early in the morning, my father started playing catch with me with a football. We had under our little house, the, uh, the driveway went under the house, and there was a big oh, drop of yeah. about six to eight feet near the top of the driveway, or as you got closer to the house, just straight down. And uh, he kept telling me, no, son, you got to throw that ball out there. You got to throw it. You got to lead me with the ball. And uh, in the back of my mind, I kept saying, well, if I lead you too far and you're looking over your shoulder, it's goodbye. You're going to drop about eight feet right into the thing. And he kept saying, throw it. I said, okay. And I did it. And he, I could just see that, you know, where you're frozen and everything becomes slow motion as he was going forward, saying, that's the way. <laughs> down and after I heard the thud, I finally said, look out for the dr And then I wrote, forget it. It's over. Now, it must have been scary. He came up seething, scraped his head over here somewhere and coming up to me. He always, whenever he was mad at me, he called me a jackass. And he came out the front of the drive and said, oh, jackass, yo, yo, jackass. Get in the house. Now he decides to get into his car, you see, to go to the doctor to fix all the abrasions. And I forgot that I had put one of those motor bombs, those big firecrackers <laughs> on the motor, oh, no. and he stepped on the gas and turned it. Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> he went off. It blew the whole hood off the, the motor. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's awful. I tell you, now, just to finish it off, I told you it was an hour. That was you a know, great Don't one. ever give an actor a cue. <laughs> God, man. Anyhow. <laughs> Well, he finally got his neighbor to take him, and Brooks and I figured now that he's away, that's the, I was confined to the house, was the best time to shoot the firecrackers off. So on our little upstairs porch with an awning, we decided to throw the firecrackers, and I proceeded to throw one as my father was arriving back at the house <laughs> on top of the awning. It set the awning on fire, and the damn house was on fire as he pulled up coming back from the doctor. That's fabulous. And we lost the bedroom and the whole car. Oh, oh, that's my most oh, memorable day with A my terrible mom. day, but a great story. Now we know to show you how close we were, he still talked to me. It was that day he said, here's $200, go be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. I don't know who the person is, but someone, a very kind act, has seen fit to send all of us, everybody at this table, a singing telegram. And uh, the telegram is waiting in the wings. So, Roz, come on on. And, okay. and, Introduce yourself. I have, I'll move over there so you're in the light. I have a telegram for you from Music Box. Okay, you ready? We're ready, Roz. <laughs> Everybody um, set? Don't choke on the chicken. Here we go. Bum -ba -da -dum -bum -bum. Happy Father's Day, dear men, the sons and fathers who knew you when. So our tribute we now pay. Enjoy your day in your own way. Some here can go mind their flock or flick the feathers off their socks. Da's son is real, Jack's is not. But at least their shows are hot. <laughs> then there's the new dad of four. Could he really ask for more than all the presents he will get someday from his new quartet? <laughs> also the crazy son with a brain. To you we salute in this refrain And that man who sings along with his offspring. Now Oscars, Tonys, quads and hens, just one duo is left then to the host who brought us here and his father we now cheer. So happy Father's Day to you and to Dover caterers too. <laughs> also Joseph Paris Wiggs, happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you, Ross. 
Wow, this has been a lot. I'm really <coughs> good feelings at the table today. I, uh, we've given you a, some fond memories of your own father and some of the things we talked about today, the pleasant experiences that you might have shared with your dad. I want to take a moment here to formally let you know a little bit more about what everybody's doing. I'll start at the end with John Cullen. John is uh, on, in starring in On the 20th Century. How is the show playing? Uh, when I saw it opening night, people were going wild. Yes, it's, uh, it's playing very well. It's dynamite. Your character is fabulous. Yeah, I, I can really retreat behind that. You really can. Yeah. It, you do not look like John Cullen on no. the stage. Who does he look like to you, John David, on the stage? Uh, he looks like Oscar Jaffe. The character Oscar Jaffe, good, good answer. He looks like somebody else. He does. He has a wig and a mustache. Yeah, he, he looks like David's father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frank Purdue, I thank you for bringing the, these. Uh, these are these little things that we've been attacking during the, the show today. Are what oven stuffer roasters? Hardly. <laughs> I know. Six or seven pounds. These are fresh Cornish game hands. Yeah, oh. Well, they're cute. <laughs> Thank you very much. Huh. And come back and join us again. Lou Brenner, is it back to Philadelphia this afternoon? Atlantic City. He goes. Atlantic City. Oh, for the weekend? Yeah. No, they live there now. Oh, good. But I just got myself a job plucking chickens for him. You used to do that. <laughs> I used to do it. I used to do it, and here I am sitting there next to a man that's... Got a job. Listen, I, want to, I want to say this, Lou, you're an incredibly vigorous man at age 83. Really. Please, I'm only 22. That's what I feel. <laughs> David, when can we catch you next on TV? Well, I'm finishing up Westbury here in New York. I think I'm going to host The Tonight Show in August. But I got some TV before that, but I think in August Come for back. a week. Dad, sure. we don't have anything to plug. You want to well, give some swimming lessons this afternoon? <laughs> no, no. We can do, I just thank you for coming. We're just happy to be up here, Bill. Your mother and I will be at your apartment over the weekend. So you will? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You got a lot of calls oh, to make. A lot of calls. <laughs> Got to change things around. But sure, you're welcome, Dad. <laughs> happy Father's Day. Thank you, thank you Bill. My apartment over the weekend. <laughs> right. Okay. Jack. Bill, thank you. You do great work in tribute. Brooks thank Atkinson. At, I have trouble saying the word. Atkinson. Atkinson. Theater. How long are you going to stay on Broadway? Uh, I'll stay at least five or six months. I think I might take a rest then and then come back. But, uh, There's one other thing I was curious six. about from the standpoint of your craft. How long did it take your body physically to adjust to being back on stage once you started in to tribute, you know? Not, uh, uh, not as long as I thought. No. I had, but I, it, it had been, oh, I guess two years since I had done a play. Um, but it, I think it's mainly the voice at first. You're not used to, if you're doing primarily films, which I have been over the over recent years, then uh, uh, you've got to start early, I think, using the voice. Well, have a great run. Thank you. Bob, you're terrific in the... Thanks, Bill. We're going to be looking for nominations, I think, next year around Tony time and Drama Desk Awards. Dad, I don't know what else to say. you got four kids waiting at home. Yep, can't wait to get there. Okay, <laughs> thank you for coming. And uh, Douglas? I never asked you essentially whether or not you wanted to follow in your father's footsteps as, as an actor. Um, I did for a while, and I'm doing the profession a favor and deciding not to be an actor. I'm, I want to direct, and uh, that's what I'm up to now. Would you like to direct your father? Um, I'm... Uh, no. <laughs> He's got the answer. <laughs> Doug has, uh, has produced and directed a review that's playing down at the Spoleto Festival. And, uh, it's been uh, extended for a month down there, so he's on his way back to South Carolina on the weekend. Good. Thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. And Thanks where is Da playing? Da is at the Morosco on West 45th Street. And you're dug in for a long run there, right? Hopefully we'll be there for a long time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. It's a joy to play. And um, Formally, I really want to say this, and I, I mean it with all my heart, and I would like all of us to say in a count of one, two, three, just Happy Father's Day, right? Thank you. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Okay, we're going to take a break now and end the show with Stiller and Mirror, and then we have our credits. Don't go away. <laughs>